Hello, my friends. So yes, this is how we are beginning this October TBR. You get to watch me uh, prepare a glass of Prosecco. Oh, look at those ice cubes and that lovely, very elegant ice tray. Let's crack those guys. Yep. There we go. I'm gonna plop one in there, plop another one in there very randomly. We're gonna leave that one behind. Ooh, you suck! We don't want her. Today was a very long day at work, which you will be able to tell by my makeup in a few minutes. Um, oh, now we're turning. Okay, you get to see Kevin's toy, that lovely Frigidaire sticker that's on my floor. I haven't bothered to pick that up for about three months. Picking the Prosecco and okay, here we go. Let's start. <sighs> Thursday. I was in a five hour meeting today. It's only supposed to be three hours. After work, I ran over to the grocery store and I picked up some alcohol. Also, is this not the most gorgeous bottle? I, I just, I saw it and I had to get it. It's also my sister's bachelorette weekend tomorrow. Um, I feel like I should have just gotten this for her, but uh, I'm sorry, Megan, this is for me tonight. <laughs> Some nice ASMR for you. <laughs> Cheers. <gasps> Prosecco on ice is my everything. Okay. Hello, my lovely friend, how are you? Today we are delving into the books that I want to read in October. It's been a minute since I have done a TBR, but then again, it's been a minute since I've been consistent on YouTube, so. I guess that does make sense. Lately I've been really liking the idea of TBR videos as sort of mini book clubs. Maybe that's what they've always meant to be. I might just be real slow on the jump there. So I'll say what I'm reading. And if any of those books appeal to you, you can also read them during this month. And then when it comes time for the monthly wrap up, we can sit down and chat about the books together. Gush, rant, rave, wax poetic, run screaming through the streets, you know. Book people stuff. So I have, I believe six, yes. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, yes, six books to share with you today. Technically nine though, uh, if you count the ones that I've already read this month. <laughs> I'm gonna structure this TBR based on genre. So if you have no interest in romance, which this list mostly is, then you don't need to watch that chapter. But if you're all about thrillers, y you get the idea. So with uh, enough babbling for me, let's, uh, let's just chat books, shall we? <laughs> First up we have Gothic Hannah by Runix. Oh baby, we're starting off strong. <laughs> this dark little one has been all over my social media as of late. I think I first heard about it though from Jean over at Romantic Deception on Instagram. If you aren't following her, you're, you're missing out. But as soon as I read her thoughts, I was just immediately like, I need this. And so I immediately downloaded it from Kindle Unlimited and began reading right away. So from what I understand from the back jacket copy and the um, first two chapters that I've read, this seems like it is a romantic, steamy, gothic mystery, which frankly sounds like the type of book that I would sell my firstborn son just for the chance to read the sample pages off of Amazon. Next up, we've got Nightfall by the one and only Penelope Douglas. Oh, Nightfall, you son of a bitch. Okay, this is the fourth book in the seemingly never-ending Devil's Night series. Um, I've been reading this series for over a year now, I think, and I've been half hating it and half absolutely obsessing over it for most of the time. There is something going berserk in my eye right now. Is it an eyelash? Is it a fuzz? Is it a Kevin hair? I don't know, but I think I'm about to start weeping. Hold please. Okay, we're back. I have conflicting thoughts about Devil's Night. I honestly never want to read it, but once I'm in, I'm in. So that's how I feel about Nightfall. I don't want to read it, but I know once I do, I'll be happy that I did. I don't know, or maybe I won't. I've heard some not rave reviews about our little buddy here, mainly that it's too long. We'll see. I'm not super confident that I'll actually read this one in October, but it's on the list because I'm currently reading it and I would like to finish it this month, but don't hold your breath from that one. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> oh, now we have these violent delights by Chloe Gong. Oh, and I tell you, I'm so excited to read this book. Okay, so this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in Shanghai. And I believe that there's some sort of virus that is causing people to rip out their throats. Sounds fucking badass. But you know, also, um, also horrible. It's just horrible. From what I've heard, it's part romance, part fantasy, part mystery, part I don't I don't fucking know everything I could ever want in a book. Honestly, it just sounds fantastic. Now we've got Sick Fucks by Tilly Cole. I have never read a Tilly Cole book, but she has been recommended to me by many of you over the years. And the time has come. I'm ready to get fucked up and boy does this sound like a one-way ticket to fucktown. I don't know a whole lot about this one other than the fact that I believe it has some pretty heinous stuff in it, but I'm just over here like, bring on the hang. I'm ready for it. I think this book is a loose retelling of Alice in Wonderland. Time will tell. The Au Pair by Emma Roos. I just have to say, before I get into the actual details about this book, I have had quite the journey with Emma Roos's last name. I thought I had it right, then I thought I had it wrong, even went so far as to wrongly correct myself in editing in another video. Um, I think though that I now have it correct. Before I had listened to an audiobook and I believe the narrator said Rouse, so I was like, it's gotta be Rouse. Then I looked up an interview with Emma Roos and she said Roos. So I think it's Roos. That's what we're going with. So this is one of the books that I have already read and I'm not gonna say too much about it because I wanna save my thoughts for the wrap up, but it is a mystery and it takes place partly in the past and partly in the present. Same kind of deal as The Perfect Guests. And it follows a woman, Seraphine, who is trying to figure out the dark secrets of her family's past. And basically the woman that might be the key to that is their old au pair who went missing right after Seraphine's mother threw herself off of the cliffs and died. Um, so it's a little bit dark, <laughs> just a tad. Okay, moving on. The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. All right, another one that I've already read. This one takes place in you guessed it. A sanatorium. But it has been recently rehabbed into a hotel. Sit on that one for a minute. So Elin is visiting this hotel to um, attend her estranged brother's engagement party. But all hell kind of breaks loose when people start disappearing in this old sanatorium. <laughs> yeah, I've got thoughts on this one. Okay, let's move on. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Oh, Alice, my love. I just read His and Hers, and you can catch my thoughts on that in my most recent reading vlog. Don't know if it's over here or over there. I think it's there. I bet I'm wrong, though. We'll see. Also, this is a lot of blank space above me. I never really did anything with my walls here, but I'm moving in a week, so it's a little too late for that. <laughs> This, I believe, is Alice's, I'm gonna put this down, it's so loud. This, I believe, is Alice's most recent book. I grabbed the audio for this, I think like a month ago, and I just played the first few minutes and I was immediately sucked in. Like, I'm already obsessed with this book and I have read maybe five minutes of it, so. <laughs> I am liking the idea of going into thrillers without knowing too much because then I won't have expectations that can be dashed. So currently all I know is one, it's a thriller, two, it's by Alice Feeney, already off to a great start here, and three, it follows a husband and wife and the husband has facial blindness. Cannot wait to delve into this one, let me tell ya. Okay, and last in our thriller lineup, we have The Chestnut Man by Soren Zweistrup. I really tried. I tried with that last name. I don't know if I got it right. Creepy serial killer leaving little dolls at the scene of his murders. Two detectives that have set aside their differences in order to solve this case. A Netflix adaptation waiting for me once I finish this book? Hello, my name's Katie and I want to devour you. Was that too much? I don't know. I don't care. That's how I feel. Okay, the horror segment of this is very short because it's only one book and I've already read it. And that is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I never read uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, but from what I understand, this is a polar opposite from that book. This book follows Christopher, who I believe is in fourth grade, and his mother, who have just moved to this small town following uh, his mother leaving an abusive relationship. And things are fine they're not great but they have one another and that's 
all that matters. I mean, it's not. They, they have a lot of bills and things are stacking up and it's stressful at the beginning. <laughs> but overall, like they have their health. And that's, that's great. Until Christopher wanders into the woods one day and then does not come back for six full days. And although he's back, he's changed. Hi, Kevin. Kevin is staring at me. Well, probably how I deserve to be looked at right now, honestly. Okay, angel faces, that is it for today's video. I hope that you are all having a wonderful day wherever you may be. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.